So guys, welcome back to the channel. James here, and in today's video, I want to discuss Panasonic. Yep, Panasonic. So I've made myself a cup of coffee, I've got a couple of notes, and this is a discussion, questions, observations about Panasonic, and in particular, particular the uh, new G9 Mark II they've just released um, on the 12th of September. So this month, a couple of weeks ago, they released the Lumix G9 Mark II. And what this means for Panasonic and where Panasonic are going in regards to their cameras and what that can possibly mean for us. A lot has been said about Micro Four Thirds. Um, a lot of full frame uh, users in particular criticize on the Micro Four Thirds system. And even saying that the Micro Four Thirds system was dead, dead and buried, and, and just absolutely gone. Well, that kind of changed a little bit with the GH6 release. Um, and now, furthermore, with the release of the Lumix G9 Mark II. I did see somewhere on the internet the other day about apparently pre-order sales of the G9 Mark II are very, very low. And there is some concerns with that and a couple of theories I've heard. Apparently, some people are not convinced that the uh, Panasonic are going to continue much with the Micro Four Thirds system, so are quite reluctant to invest in new Micro Four Thirds body. I mean, that could be total crap, uh, and that remains to be seen. It would be really cool, though, for Panasonic to release some uh, more consumer cameras, some, some, some smaller cameras, even going back to like the GAE, G7 style cameras, so a bit more to them, but not totally pro, uh, keeping those prices down, but having some of the really cool features which we're seeing now in the G9 Mark II, in particular, the fancy new phase detect autofocus. Now, I've been a Panasonic user since uh, 2013, when I got the GH4, was it 2014? I can't remember, a long time. So I've been, I've always, um, I've always really appreciated Panasonic from a video filmmaker point of view. I've always found them to be um, really good at giving you all that it can in regards to video functionality and features within their cameras. Also for photography too, but there was definitely a little nod towards filmmakers when it comes to Panasonic cameras and you definitely saw that in the GH4. And I will say this about Panasonic, they don't seem to cripple their cameras like some other brands do, particularly Canon. They tend to kind of restrict um, their cameras and protect their uh, other Proline uh, cameras and stuff like that. So Panasonic really don't. And you could argue Panasonic don't do this because they are very much aware that particularly with their mirrorless, um, sorry, in particular with their Micro Four Thirds lineup of cameras, you know, they are somewhat um, hindered by the size of the sensor. And I think that that is an obvious uh, issue which they can't get around. That's just physics, it's the size of the sensor will unfortunately mean you know, not as good dynamic range that you will find in full frame cameras, and also low, um, sorry, high ISOs will not perform as well as you'll find on a bigger sensor. Bearing that in mind, I've used Micro Four Thirds for, for the longest time, and you know, there are ways around that. You can light, you can use faster lenses, um, and just understanding these restrictions with a Micro Four Thirds sensor. I don't think it's that great of a deal, to be honest. You can get some really nice images. Also, with these restrictions and constraints, you can see how Panasonic are using that to kind of be more creative and coming up with really cool computational uh, technologies to enhance the user experience and to overcome some of, the, some of these um, inadequacies with the Micro Four Thirds sensor, such as high-res mode and dynamic range boosting. And another interesting thing I've been thinking about when looking at the recent lineup now from Panasonic, you have the S5 II, the S5 X, and now you have the G9. Now, a lot of companies have 
uh, a couple of sensors within their uh, lineup of cameras. Canon have APS-C in full frame, same as Sony. Fuji have medium format and APS-C and whatnot. So, you know, with Panasonic, they have full frame and they have micro four thirds. Now, for me, I shoot both full frame and micro four thirds, and I really see the benefits of having both systems within my workflow. There's far more advantages to the micro four thirds system than having an APS-C system. Um, and that mainly is down to the size of the longer focal length lenses. I know there are some full frame lenses from Sigma, for example, that are quite small and quite competitive in size with um, micro four thirds lenses, but you can't deny that longer reach lenses are far smaller on the micro four thirds system and they have generally smaller lenses than you find on APS-C or full frame. Not only that, micro four thirds cameras lead the way with IBIS, that in-body image stabilization, and the new G9 is a testament to that, 7.5 stops. You can almost leave the tripod and the gimbal at home with that. So there's another benefit to the micro four thirds system there. Another thing as well is the resolutions that you, you're not getting these 4K crops or these mega crops with higher frame rates per second that you find even in the Panasonic full frames. You know, the it's less, less taxing on the camera with a smaller sensor to allow for much higher frame rates and much higher resolutions when it comes to Micro Four Thirds cameras. That's another real big benefit of Micro Four Thirds cameras. So for me to pair the two, having full frame and Micro Four Thirds, I think is a real benefit. And I can see this potentially happening with Panasonic with the new G9 Mark II body, very similar to the S5 II. You could even use the same battery grip and the, and the same cage. And I, I generally think they're trying to see the Micro Four Thirds system as part of the full frame system within Panasonic and in, in enticing and inviting content creators to invest in both systems to use together. And it makes sense if you have the body is you know the same as the full frames. You know, you can match, like I said, your battery grips and your cages and whatnot, but also the batteries are the same, so you don't have to purchase multiple different batteries. Also, you've got the same color profiles as well, so matching the, these cameras up in post won't be too much of a hassle. So other than the lenses uh, being different and obviously the mount, um, I can see potentially Panasonic trying to incorporate the Micro Four Thirds system with the full frame system and those complementing each other and really give an advantage to anybody using both systems. I mean, with the new phase detect autofocus and Panasonic, they're gonna get better and better and better with it. There really are no restrictions um, when it comes to Panasonic cameras. And it's always been their biggest downfall, uh, the autofocus. And yeah, as, video, as a video creator, filmmaker myself, it's not been the be all and end all. Uh, manual focus usually is the way for me, but it's, I can see the benefits of having a phase detect autofocus in certain situations, and now these Panasonic cameras have that. So with the constant drive to get new cameras out, um, this can only mean well for us guys on a budget, or girls, uh, this can only mean well for us because with every new camera that comes out, the previous camera drops down in price. And if you have a bit of patience and save a little bit of money, you get some really good deals. Now I've had a look online and I, f I found the S5, which I have, and that cost me 1600 pound at the time with a lens, new. That's now about 700, 800 pound. And that's a full frame, 4K, really amazing image quality. So many good things about the S5. And that's a really good camera for seven to 800 pounds. So an absolute steal in the second-hand market. Also, another camera I've been toying about buying again, uh, a camera which I kind of miss, and I could do with buying that camera again, so maybe I will, maybe I won't, I don't know. But anyway, the GH5, that is on the market between four and 500 pound. Um, perhaps it'll be more, actually, but nevertheless, if anybody knows about the GH5 and its capabilities, four to five and a half hundred pound is an absolute steal for this professional camera. Uh, it's a 10-bit video 
photo content creating absolute monster and you can get that for just a few hundred pound so let panasonic go mental i say let them release all these cameras more cameras the better uh, it keeps the competition competitive and that can only mean well for us. Like I said earlier though, I would like to see some more consumer cameras coming from Panasonic. They create such amazing cameras and they give you a lot for your money. Um, although the G9 Mark II is probably a little bit overpriced if I'm totally honest, but there we go. Yeah, let's see what Panasonic does. I think the S um, series, they're gonna have an upgrade completely again, or the S1, I should say. So that will be very interesting to see what comes um, that way. So exciting times for Panasonic and Microsoft Thirds isn't dead. So guys, that's enough of me rambling on about Panasonic and cameras and whatnot. Um, what are your thoughts on Panasonic, the G9 Mark II, Micro Four Thirds? Leave those comments in the comment section down below. That's it from me. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>